My name is Lily Moayeri, and I am one of Festival Insider's contributors. I'm here with her mix a lot, aka Lauren Spalding of Femhouse, who are celebrating their three year anniversary this month. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so you have a lot of stuff going on, both as an artist and with Femme House. Um, but let's go back to your early introduction to the music industry, which, from what I understand, happened through a teacher at your high school. Yeah, I went to a, I went to a school, 6th through 12th grade uh, in L.A. called LACES. That's a, an acronym, obviously. Um, and there is a teacher. Well, there were like rumors of a teacher that that was running this program outside of her classroom. Um, and one day I went to check it out. It was called Yes to Jobs and she was just handing out applications. Uh, but Yes to Jobs is a nonprofit that I guess just went around to schools with large black and brown populations. Um, and you could apply and if you were chosen, they would teach you how to interview and teach you how to write a resume and then place you in paid internships in the entertainment ministry. So I started working at Capitol Records in the publicity department as an intern um, the day after I graduated high school. And that's a hard job to get. It really is. It's a hard job to get. It's a hard job to do. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, but then after that, that was your foot in. And after that, you had a very long journey through different parts of the music industry. It seems to me like from our conversation, I was like, I think she's like ticked every job there is. You've at least done it for a little while. Um, can you share some of those experiences with us? Yeah, I mean, I did street team stuff. I feel like I feel like at the time, this is like um, sort of like early to mid 2000s, there was like kind of a track. Um, and through the program, I was able to sort of follow that track, but in different contexts. So not just in the music industry, but at movie studios, et cetera. Um, so I did like street teaming for a while with Capital. I worked in a, a couple of different music departments at Disney Studios, um, which is like a huge umbrella term for all sorts of shit you have <laughs> no idea about. And um, all of it sort of landed me um, ultimately at, in artist management, which is sort of where I feel like that's where I feel like I became a professional, not just like a hustler, right? It's just <laughs> like, oh, I, this is my job is an artist manager. You know what I mean? Not just like, oh, you know, I'm, I got seven of them. Which one you want to know about? <laughs> Um, yeah, and it's, I remember you telling me about, you know, looking on MySpace and checking out people's music, because I think everybody feels like artist managers kind of all of a sudden arrive at where they are. And it's so not true, because an artist manager uh, goes through kind of the same kind of steps that an artist does, where you're working and you're looking for that talent and then you're helping grow that talent and cultivate that talent until, and you're helping market it. This is all the stuff that an artist still does for themselves these days. Um, and then when you get them to a certain point, that's when maybe enough people are interested in them that maybe you're making this much money off of the artist. And it's really, really hard work. And when I talk to my manager friends, they're not in a rush to take people on. Because it is a lot of time invested as well as money in a lot of cases. And so it's it's a hard job. And I think people just think, oh, you're just so-and-so's manager. You must be raking it in. And it's like, no, that's no. not you, really it's like, how it is. Typically, like if you like break down whatever the artist is taking home, like to an hourly rate, it gets fucking sad. But like, <laughs> I mean, that's sort of to that end, it's like sort of what drew me to it because it demands that you be a fan first um, because it is tremendously thankless in a lot of ways and a lot of like little like detailed minute ways that affect your actual day-to-day -day quality of life. But there's nothing like, I remember the, the first manager I worked for, his name was Craig Fruin. Um, and he's an old school guy. He's worked with everybody. And um at the time we were working with like a bunch of heavy hitters and uh we discovered this band cherub and you know it was just crazy to see this 67 year old man like get a twinkle in his eye because he sees something specific that he probably has seen a lot in his life but like maybe not in a really long time and decide like that's how a manager decides right that's like 
that's the only way that you can decide because if you make a pro cons list, you're just like, I'm never, I, why, I'm going to work at a bank. Like what the fuck am I doing? You know what I mean? So um, this idea that like, as you know, I think as all of us as like music industry professionals, like it's important to be a fan first because it's one of the only perks of the job. <laughs> you know? It's true and not to lose that. Cause it's yeah. so easy just as you get older, it has, it's got nothing to even do with the music industry. Although the music industry kind of beats it out of you a little bit quicker, but just as you get older, you're just not as much of a passionate fan of music as when you're a teenager, or even in your twenties and to try and like keep that going so that you can still do a great job and still enjoy your job. Cause after all you work in music, you're supposed to be having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. And like, I think for a lot of us, um, we happen to have monetized our great passions in life. And that's a slippery slope because where does work you and you, you like where, where, where's the line. Right. Um, and like my personal gauge is like, whenever I'm feeling bad, I go see some live music. And if I still feel the same and not feel like I'm just like, not like looking through it through a manager's eyes or whatever, you know, fucking all the stuff that I do, if I'm just like a fan getting in a better mood because I'm watching some live music around a bunch of other people that are in a good mood watching live music. I'm like, okay, pulse check. Like it's all good. <laughs> back, back to fight another day. I love that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Fem House, um, why it was formed, how it was formed. And I would love for you to describe for our festival inside our audience all your different activities and initiatives. And I know there's a lot, Jesus. but um, I just, it's such an impressive organization that I just want to make sure that everybody understands just how much good work you're doing and what's available to them. That's the other essential thing is this is not a closed club. It's available, tap into it. Um, and just from an insider perspective, I can say that you're extremely organized and extremely together and professional. So it's not just like some friends getting together and trying to do a thing, although it is some friends getting together and trying to do a thing, but you're doing something that's extremely legit and very respected and very much on par with any other established nonprofit organization that's been doing it for years. So after Thank that, you. that big intro, <laughs> tell our audience. No pressure, huh? <laughs> Um, you know, at the, I think the, the base at a base level, what Fem House is, is a community. Um, and what we're trying to do with that community is sort of create pathways to opportunity and share resources, all the things that you want a good community to do. Um, and our basis in that community is providing education and creating safe spaces for education. So for instance, um, my co-founder, uh, and business partner, She's a producer and DJ named LP Giobi. And when she started producing and DJing, she was taking classes often with hundreds of dudes and just finding that there was no, you know, there's like, fuck, I couldn't get a question in in three fucking hours because Brad wouldn't shut the fuck up. Or like all these guys are pairing off and clicking off and going to the pub to share information and synthesize information. And I'm just like here by myself. Um, and we sort of like thought on that and it was just like, how much different would the pathway be for you? How much shorter would the learning curve have been if you've just been able to learn and experience your learning in the same way as them? So we started uh, with like a dozen women and gender expansive folks in a room in LA three years ago, almost to the day, um, at a room in Ableton Studios, hunched over laptops and Ableton Live software and a couple of Ableton pushes. Um, and just created a safe place to ask questions and figure shit out. Um, and that's still sort of like the bedrock of what we do. We still have monthly production workshops and DJ workshops that are free, that'll always be free. We also have like deeper dive online courses. Um, and as this community has grown around this learning as community often does, um, we've sort of like zoomed out and thought, well, shit, if we're educating a bunch of people and they don't have anywhere to flex that education. Who gives a shit? Um, so we've, you know, we just finished a tour. We're like tiptoeing into the live space um, and we have a radio show, et cetera. So it's all about platforming and like making sure that people have resources 
that they can learn from those resources and then leverages those resources and education into real world opportunity um, to grow their careers as artists. And everyone is welcome. Yes, it's called Fem House and it is to move the needle on marginalized communities um, in general, but you know, my favorite, my favorite people in the community is like, we have like online like workshops and there's like dudes there, they'll like turn off their camera immediately. I'm like, yeah, you understand the assignment. <laughs> camera off and mute, just take your notes and shush. Like, and like the community gets it. Um, and it's a, it's a really special group of folks. Um, that's really, that's funny, but that's amazing that, that, the, that they're doing that because that does make a difference. And there's been a lot of research that shows that as well, where mm -hmm. unfortunately, especially in a situation like that, that's been so uh, male heavy. I think women are scared to ask questions. Um, and honestly, it's a question that probably everybody has, but they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to sound stupid. They don't want anybody to make fun of them. Yeah. And then, you know, the learning kind of gets stunted because of that or even halted in a lot of cases so that's great but it's just like nope it's kind of a neutral space here yeah and, yeah and yeah and I'm, i i mean I, I feel tremendously proud of the community and that you know sort of like the allies and people that we attract to it just understand that like they naturally understand where to take up space and where not to mm -hmm. um and that's like i mean that's that's hard to come by in, in a lot of places in the world let alone in a fucking zoom chat um, so, and of course you're an artist yourself under the Her Mix A Lot moniker. One of the things you told me in our interview, which I found fascinating was how you didn't think you wanted to be an artist and how being an artist in dance music was easier for you to accept for yourself. Um, so tell us about this Her Mix A Lot journey and how you came to this place where now you're comfortable with actually being the artist and not just the person behind the artist. <laughs> I don't know that I'm comfortable yet with being the artist. I feel like I'm just like, Less well, whatever, if you guys insist. <laughs> um, Sophie Tucker, dear friends of mine, um, and they are better than any other people that I've ever met at creating community and sharing space and using their platform, giving their platform to other people and encouraging folks to sort of like step into any power that they might see in you or just like try new shit. And that's, essentially what happened. That's what they did with um, my co-founder and then in turn with me. And it's just like, there's something really special and freeing in the artistry for me, I think at this juncture, because I've, um, I've done so many other things in the music industry um, on the professional side that I don't live and die by being an artist like most artists do and must. Um, and it's just like pure fun. It's just like pure freedom, pure creative outlet. Um, and I don't think about it too much. I don't have to think about it too much. Um, and dance music is sort of, you know, I guess now and thinking about it um, and dance music, it's it's hardly ever about the top liner, right? It's about the producer, right? It's it's Calvin Harris featuring Rihanna. Never mind that Rihanna is like the most famous person <laughs> in the world, right? And like, there's something I think very appealing about that to me that I just realized. Um, it still sort of like allows me to take a back seat a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explore my own um, creative depths um, as a result of it. And uh, I think that's just good. It's a good outlet for all the all the things that are inside of me outside of just like all the things that I um, sort of do professionally if you will creative outlets are really important and I don't think I certainly didn't understand how important they were when I was younger and now that I do well I've understood about it for quite a while now but I really do see that when people don't have it they're a little bit lost but they don't know why yeah, well, they are lost and they know why they just don't know what their creative thing is. So it's just when you find it, whatever it is, it's really important to lean into it and make sure that you take care of yourself that way by giving yourself that outlet. Yeah. And I sort of think of it as play. I have a toddler. Have, my daughter's going to be two next month. And I was just, you know, watching her and spending so much time with her. I'm just like, man, your job is to play like you're just toddling around, playing with stuff figuring out how it works, discovering you're just 
being, just existing in the world and like figuring out creative ways to sort of interact with it. Um, and it's weird that we lose that the older that we get when we probably need it. Wait, like, it's like, yeah, I, I know my way around a fucking Excel spreadsheet, but, <laughs> you know, like, that's not playing, bro. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> I love Excel spreadsheets. It is like playing for I, I I too love Excel spreadsheets. Like we're going to get off this call and I'm going to bang through like two spreadsheets and a couple of decks and just sleep like a baby, bro. Like it's going to be the most productive. It's a, good it's a good feeling to get through the, um, to get through the spreadsheets and see them all lining up. Um, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on everything you and Fem House have accomplished, both on your own and together. And looking thank forward you. to seeing you on the road and to seeing what else Fem House has in store. And congratulations yeah, on your birthday, on the Thanks. Fem House birthday. This I month. don't know when this is going to run, but if it runs before November, uh, May 22nd, we are having our very first ever Fem House takeover at. Um, a music festival and we are taking over the forest art park at electric daisy carnival in wow amazing yeah. it's going to be quite a party so if, if it's may 21st and you're watching this come see us <laughs> i recommend that thank you thank you lily hey insiders thanks for watching this video if you're new here please consider subscribing to our channel or feel free to check out our recommended videos thanks for watching